Last weekend, which was the 4th of October 2015, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr George Kerry, was reported saying that the United Kingdom has a responsibility to Syrian Christians. Lord Kerry said time is running out for Christians in the region. Successive UK governments have failed to do enough to support minority communities in the Middle East. And now, sadly, many Christians have concluded they have no future in a region where they have lived for nearly 2,000 years. He urged David Cameron to consider the claims of Christian communities for asylum and to pursue both diplomatic and military means to end the threat of Islamic violence against minority communities. Lord Kerry also called for British military action, mentioning the current Russian activity. But our Defence Secretary, Michael Fallon MP, complained about Mr Putin's airstrikes, saying he was targeting the Free Syrian Army and claiming he's shoring up Assad and perpetuating the suffering. Turkey doesn't like the Russian airstrikes either. That's because they think the Russians might help the Syrian Kurds to regain their towns and villages, and then their own Kurdish minority might start to get a bit above their station. But despite British ministers and our Prime Minister repeatedly calling for the removal of President Assad, one Crispin Blunt MP said over the weekend that Britain and the US were getting in the way of solving the Syrian civil war by calling for Assad to step down. He said it was not helpful for David Cameron to compare Assad's regime with the actions of ISIS terrorists. And he said the West was in no position to complain about Russian airstrikes in Syria. You're thinking, who is Crispin Blunt? Well, actually, he is the chairman of the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Select Committee. He is a man blessed with more common sense and apparently with better access to internal knowledge about Syria than the holders of our great offices of state. Exactly four weeks ago, Mr Blunt's committee heard from those who know that the Syrian opposition is now totally dominated by Islamic State and Al-Qaeda offshoots like the Al-Nusra Front. They heard witnesses agree with Mr Blunt that the American-trained and armed Free Syrian Army, described by him that day as our clients, are, to use his words, a busted flush. They heard the experts say that airstrikes against ISIS will work, but only if they are called in by men on the ground and immediately backed up by ground forces. And they heard learned professors say, much as one might dislike Bashar al-Assad, that if he goes, Syria implodes. There is no other guarantor of stability. It's Assad or the deluge, said one. So when Mr Fallon complains that the Russians are shoring up Assad, I can only retort, you mean they are preventing Syria from becoming a failed state like Libya is after our intervention? How inconsiderate of them. Millions have been displaced from Syria. Minorities such as Christians, President Assad's own Alawite people, Shia Muslims, Druze, Kurds, all these are people who felt a degree of safety under the Assad regime. And I have to say that our government, including the previous gung-ho Foreign Secretary William, now Lord Haig, bear much of the responsibility for that mass displacement by encouraging, supplying, training and even arming Syrian rebel groups. It is we who have perpetuated the suffering, not Assad. And before anyone tells me about all the dreadful things he has done, I just ask you, who did you hear that from? The same people who have not yet apologised for bombing a hospital in Afghanistan run by Médecins Sans Frontières because some Taliban were being treated there? I'm afraid you can't trust either our government or that of the US to tell you the truth. The Word of God tells us to support Christian brothers and sisters and to pray for our leaders. So I'm praying to hear from Mr Cameron that he is prepared to prioritise asylum to Syrian Christians and that he will work humbly with Syria and its allies to defeat Islamic State and bring stability to Syria and Iraq so that the Christians and the other minorities can return to areas they and their ancestors have lived in, as Dr Kerry reminded us, for 2,000 years.